Hi, and welcome to our 16th Octoprint on Air episode, live <coughs> on this very nice uh, and warm and sunny uh, Saturday afternoon. Uh, right now it looks like I'm still talking to myself here, but since this recording will be made available to the general public after um, the broadcast, I'll just get started uh, anyhow. All right, so um, as usual during this um, uh, during this broadcast, I will tell you what I have been up to uh, over the past couple of weeks, what uh, will be the next steps in the world of uh, developing Octoprint, and then we also have a very, very short Q&A segment. Um, only very short because um, the Patreons only submitted two questions to the answer uh, to the Q&A sheet. Uh, and uh, so these were there were only two questions that I was able to prepare. So if you have any questions, as usual, we will have a live chat over on your right if you're on a, um, if you're watch watching this on a desktop, and on the bottom down there if you are watching this on a mobile client. So use this live chat, please, uh, if you are live here, um, and uh, and ask questions. Otherwise, we'll just have a shorter video than usual. I mean, for me, that's not a problem. As I said, it's a very sunny Saturday, and I am actually itching a bit to go outside today. Uh, but um, yeah, I'm, of course, also happy to answer any questions that still might come up. OK, so I will keep an uh, eye on that live chat, and uh, then let's see. Where that leads us. Okay, so what have what have I been up to? Um, so since last time, you might have noticed that I released Octoprint 1.3.7. Um, that release went through four release candidates over the course of I think two or three weeks. And uh, huge thank you again to everyone who helped test this um, and helped to iron out a couple of bugs. Um, only five days after I pushed out 137. So I pushed it out on a Monday and then on Friday I got reports that um, new installations and new updates were no longer working. And this was uh, not due to something that I had done wrong, but uh, due to um, a third party dependency that Octoprint relies on having been upgraded uh, in the meantime. And that upgrade had, had a bug. So that specific version had a bug. Um, but since Octoprint had not did not limit um, limit this dependency to to exclude this buggy version, uh, Octoprint would happily pull in this this new uh, and buggy version, and then the the update or the new install would fail, and every everyone would be very sad. So um, what I did here was that I immediately pushed out. Um, uh, yeah, 138, which was basically just a hotfix release pinning this dependency uh, to a version, to the last no, uh, version known to work. And uh, so this is why we are at 138 now, which was basically 137 with one line changed. Um, and then sadly, only I think, yeah, a couple of days after that, yet again, so after I had pushed out this hotfix release, I had to discover that there was a race condition present in Octoprint uh, during, uh, yeah, that basically triggers when you try to pause or cancel Octoprint. So it doesn't necessarily trigger, but it can trigger for people. So the symptom is basically that you're printing and then you hit either pause or cancel. And then Octoprint switches to this new pausing or canceling state, but it doesn't uh, proceed with actually running the cancel or the, the pause script and uh, and all that stuff. And this was caused by a, a, a small uh, race condition internally, which made it yeah, basically lock up. There is a absolutely easy workaround for this problem, which I'm going to show you right now. And uh, this is basically, I just have to switch to the other screen, which I can do how again? Ah, let me just do it this way. Okay, so um, if you go to the terminal tab, so if you if you end up in this stuck situation where it says pausing or canceling up here, but the terminal shows it not doing anything anymore, um, you just um, here under the terminal tab, there's this little advanced option thingy and you can just click on that. Then you get this fake acknowledge acknowledgement button that also tells you what that uh, it is basically used to, uh, you, you can basically use it to unstick uh, communication problems. And you, when you just click that, then everything will work again. And uh, 
the, the, the solution for this problem is basically clicking this button automatically. Uh, it sounds a bit weird now, but uh, yeah, this is more or less the fix that I implemented uh, already. So this bug will be fixed in 139. Um, but uh, considering that there's a quite easy workaround for this problem, um, I decided for now against the hotfix release because the problem is every single hotfix release that I push out basically eats up a whole day, if not more. Uh, and um, yeah, this just, yeah, this doesn't scale very well in the long run. Um, what this problem really did show me though, is that we still do not have enough people testing the release candidates because, well, I was testing it obviously, or, or them rather, those four release candidates. And there were also a bunch of other people who were doing that. So I think some, some something like 20 people or so reported back with basically a thumbs up over the course of the uh, release candidate phase. But yeah, I mean, basically a week after the release of 138 or, or less than a week after that, so suddenly people started running in this issue. So um, if more people had, uh, had helped test this stuff, my guess is that we would have encountered this issue earlier. By the way, I on, on my two printers here, I still wasn't able to um, intentionally um, or unintentionally uh, trigger this particular issue. So it seems to be related to um, to, um, to to some. I just was distracted a bit by chat. Sorry. <laughs> um, uh, so yeah, I lost my train of thought. Um, yeah, so I could not reproduce this on either of those. So it appears to be something related to, I don't know what kind of factor, maybe the specific version of the Pi that you're running Octoprint on, or maybe the length of the USB cord. I have no idea. Basically, um, I, I understand how this situation happens and I, well, just looking at the code, I could basically debug it and, and understand how this could be possible to happen and then, yeah, make it impossible to happen. But um, I have no idea how, how, yeah, how to intentionally trigger it or something like that. So um, the fact that people, or some people of you, are actually running into it in in the in the in the wild, so to speak, in the field, means um, it is reproducible in the field. And um, yeah, this means, as I said, we probably need more testers. Yet more testers. Um, and I thought that since it's been a while since I last showed you how that works and how you can help test uh, Octoprint's release candidates, I'll just quickly shove this in here again as well, um, since it's uh, quickly demonstrated anyhow. So basically, um, you might already know that Octoprint has this little, in, in its settings, has this little section software update here where it tells you which version of Octoprint is installed, which version of, all the, uh, of plugins that are registered with the updater are installed, installed and which are available and all that. And you also have settings here. And um, you can basically tell Octoprint to please not only, uh, uh, please not, um, yeah, update, only update to stable versions, but also to the maintenance RC, so the release candidates by just selecting this here and then clicking save. And this is basically all that you need to do. Um, and we'll also have uh, a bit more explanation and, um, and also, um, uh, yeah, the answer to such questions as should I even run any of those RCs, answered in the forum over on discourse.octoprint.org in this, um, uh, yeah, in the in the how to use the release chance to help re uh, test release candidates topic, which is also linked from this, um, yeah, from this dialogue here. So just if you are even slightly inclined to help. Uh, just click there and read, read through the stuff and see if this is maybe something that you are willing to help with. All right, um, back to me. Hi. Um, okay, so um, yeah, uh, what I showed you last time was um, this, this nifty new uh, granular permission system that uh, Mark Hanapel Akara Salandora had filed a PR for back in, I think, November. Um, that would basically allow uh, way more granular permission modeling in Octoprint. So not just currently you, on, you only have this anonymous user, anonymous people who are not locked in currently, then users who are locked in, and then also admins who are users with a bunch of extra um, permissions, like basically having access to the settings and all that. And um, in this new permission system, we have now um, 
yeah, basically um, split all these uh, permissions and all these these the, yeah all, all these permissions up. So you have way more granular control over um, over what a, what a user, what a logged in user, what a logged out user, so a guest or, or and on what note might be able to see and might be able to do. Um, and I'll also leave a link uh, to this last episode in the description so that you can take a look at the demo that I did of all those stuff, uh, all those things last time. Anyhow, um, I finally got around to finalizing the, uh, the, 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 um, yeah, the, the kinks I still had to iron out on this one. And uh, yeah, it's now merged to the devil branch. So far, I have not heard anything back about it. I'm not sure if this means that no one is currently try running the devil branch or if it means that it's just running perfectly. But in any case, it's um, yeah, it's now in there. And um, yeah, huge thanks to Mark uh, for filing this PR and, and putting in the groundwork in the, in the first place. And uh, while it took a, a while to pound things into final shape, I think it now looks and feels really great. So there's a lot of flexibility in there now, what, what, you, what you want to allow guests to view and what you allow users to do and all that. And it's also expandable by plugins. So if you have a plugin that uh, offers functionality, um, like yeah, something that would be more be suited to an admin or more suited to a user, you can also now define your own permissions and allow um, who uh, allow people um, on their actual print instances to define uh, who, who is allowed to do what of that as well. Okay. So what else did I do? Well, um, uh, the funny thing is that the last three days I mostly uh, had a lot of fun with the new with this new GDPR policy stuff. I don't know if you heard about that. Um, it's basically that new privacy policy by backed by the European Union that goes in effect uh, on May twenty fifth, and. Um, yeah, basically, if you are if you are even remotely um, present on the on the web and have a website like octoprint.org, for example, um, uh, you are now in the situation that you have to look into this stuff and and be compliant to that because everyone from the EU who is able to access your website, uh, yeah, basically now can um, yeah file a complaint against you if you're not compliant to this. This, uh, this privacy policy. And at first I thought, oh, well, octoprint.org, it's a static website. I don't do much on there. Um, how bad could it be? Well, it turns out, I, as I said, I spent three days or something like that now on, on this and deep diving into all these um, requirements uh, for both uh, octoprint.org and plugins.octoprint.org, so the plugin repository. And I think I've, yeah, I, I, I'm now at a point at least where most things should be covered. I still have to sink some more hours into this, though. And I have to say that, boy, is this some annoying stuff. Um, yeah, uh, I really did not have a lot of fun there, I have to say. And uh, reading legal uh, requirement documentation stuff is not certainly not something that I'm very good at or, um, yeah, very comfortable at either. Yeah, so yeah, this is uh, certainly, that was certainly some kind of curveball, especially since I thought it would not really affect me that much. And then I figured, oh, well, hmm, it doesn't, it does after all. Yeah. Um, okay, so what else did happen? Uh, yeah, also, um, you might also have seen the notification or the blog post that Octopi 0.15.1 uh, was released and also saw an, R saw an RC uh, one week prior to that. Um, so the, that was also nice. That's um, the new image uh, that now also supports the RPI 3 plus. And apart from that, uh, mo the most uh, impressive or uh, yeah, the, the most important change is, is more something under the hood because uh, Guy Sheffer, who does this image, basically revamped the whole uh, build image, um, the build uh, script, and uh, it's now very modular and easy to extend and all that. So we might also profit from other images that are now based on this other, um, uh, on this new build um, system. Yeah. Um, the bad, the bad thing about this release is that just the day before yesterday, uh, we found a small compatibility 
compatibility issue with uh, Octoprint 1.38 is shipped on that image and uh, PIP10 is also shipped on that image. Um, so uh, what is PIP? Uh, PIP is basically the Python packaging tool that Octoprint also uses for installing plugins and updating plugins and updating itself and all, all that. Um, and um, the installation of plugin packages in PIP10 has slightly changed. So the process in which uh, PIP10 does, um, does stuff like installing from a URL um, means that some metadata will be um, stored on, uh, on the system slightly differently. And the problem is that Octoprint so far didn't know how to uh, understand this new format of metadata, which I of course only noticed after uh, after this uh, this uh, PIP10 uh, Octopi 015 issue was reported. Um, and the symptoms of this will be that uh, if you install a plugin from the plugin repository or from an uploaded zip file or something like that, you will get um, you will not get uh, in in this little um, notification bubble. You will not get something like installed plugin name, plugin version, but instead you will st will get installed unknown. And when you start up Octoprint and when it detects all the plugins it has installed, it will also lock a warning. This is the only stuff that will happen, so it's more or less only cosmetic. Um, the plugins will continue to run just fine, stuff will work flawlessly. Um, you will not see it anywhere else. Um, the only thing is that in the in the plugin manager you will not see the author in the homepage of the plugin, um, but you will still see the name of the version. Um, so this is not a really pressing and, and, and hugely tricky issue. Um, uh, and the maintenance branch, aka what will become 139, already has a fix for that. But of course it's a bit sad that the new shiny new Octopi image um, uh, does uh, does have this uh, does have this this issue from stock is is a bit sad. So um, I talked to Guy and um, pushed a, a fix for this issue. So we will pin a, a pip to the the former version, which does not yet yet do this stuff. Um, and uh, yeah, we will build an 0151 image from that and release this also as soon as possible, basically. So uh, yeah, that was that. Uh, who that was a long uh, wall of words from my side. Okay. Um, oh, also something that I really want to mention here, since it makes me very, very happy and uh, really has push, pushed, uh, uh, nee, taken a, a, a huge load of my shoulders, is that um, I'm really happy to report that the forum uh, is so working really, really well. So I, um, I think I announced it last in the last. Um, in the last broadcast that uh, we now have this community forum up and running at discourse.octoprint.org and this is uh, the one-stop shop now for any questions that you might have for Octoprint or Octopi, development questions, plug-in um, uh, development stuff and also for, sh for just, you know, like sharing what you have done with Octoprint, what you have done with your printer, things like that. So basically the Octoprint community. And uh, this is also what replaced the mailing list and the G plus community that uh, we so far had and which was not really working that great. And um, I have to say that now after um, one month in productive uh, in, pro in production and, and basically something like 1.5 months <laughs> or, or maybe ne maybe even two months in, 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 in some sort of beta setup, this forum is working nicely. So a lot of people are asking questions there, but are also getting help is my impression. And um, I'm, I'm really uh, thrilled that it worked out that well and that uh, you guys are really also, also helping each other on there and um, creating some sort of knowledge base in the process that people can uh, search and and find answers to their problems in, in um, instead of having to um, yeah, ask them over and over and over again. And this is really nice. Yeah. And I just wanted to say that. <laughs> okay. Um, so, yeah, as you noticed, the last couple of weeks were somehow busy. <laughs> Uh, the question is what will be the next step. So I already mentioned that um, we will try to put out a, uh, an, an, a new Octopi image uh, with, with this very, very small change. 
of um, shipping with uh, PIP 903 instead of 1001 um, to work around the, the incompatibility with Octoprint 138. Um, I've also uh, already started and will continue to work on a couple of things like bugs and, and small improvements that are in the pipeline for uh, Octoprint 139. So the next maintenance release. Uh, I feel that I will, as I said, still have to spend a significant amount of time on this whole GDPR stuff. Oh. And um, yeah, of course, uh, also, of course, I will continue working on 140. Now that the granular permission system is finally merged, I can now um, concentrate on the next huge, um, huge work package, and that will be the new COM layer. Uh -huh. And um, yeah, considering how the last couple of months went, um, I will also, of course, take care of whatever decides to throw itself in the way <laughs> uh, and uh, try to tackle it. Um, yeah, I have to admit that these days I sometimes feel like I'm more reacting than acting um, because I constantly have to pull, pull out a fire there or there. And well, but I'll, I'll just continue to do that and carry on and um, try to keep every ball in the air that I have in the air. All right. Um, so that would have been what will be my next steps. And that brings us already to our two, two question Q&A segment, because again, we only had two questions in the backlog. If those of you currently watching this live and have access to the, uh, to the live chat want to ask anything, feel free. If you don't have any questions, don't worry. Uh, it's sunny outside. I will find some way to spend my afternoon. <laughs> okay, so um, the first question was by, and I hope I pronounced his name correctly, uh, Sverde. Um, since so many of us run Octoprint on Octopi, it would be great to get some more focus on how to control extra printer hardware like fans, chamber heaters, lamps, status LEDs and so on safely from the Raspberry Pi. So um, I understand where you're coming from. The problem is that I uh, can't really do that from the core application. So. Um, Octoprint itself is platform agnostic. So while it runs uh, usually on a Raspberry Pi, it's not the only platform it's supposed to run on. So anything Raspberry Pi specific really doesn't belong in it. Um, and I'm also not entirely sure what else would be needed um, for some easier or, or um, yeah, more focus or something like that. Then um, including wiring Pi on the Octopi image, and, and we've already been doing that since I think 014, um, so a, a while now. And of course, Octoprint also supports plugins, so combining wiring Pi and a plugin should, uh, and, and also the, the RPI GPIO package that you can also pull in as a dependency for your plugin should already cover pretty much all bases. Um, the next problem here with some kind of more centralized approach would be that yeah, well, people's requirements with regards to um, external hardware that they might want to somehow interface with their Raspberry Pi through GPIO or, or whatnot, uh, yeah, that diverges quite way, uh, way too much. Um, yeah, and uh, I'd rather actually see the community as a whole implement what they want and need here instead of forcing a specific direction by some kind of implementation that I provide. Um, that being said, if there are any things that are currently missing from the plugin environment or that are in need of additional, um, yeah, or in need of, of help or, or, or of a helping hand in general, of course, I'm happy to, to, um, to do that and to, to help there and to, yeah, do everything in my power basically to make uh, stuff like that easier and, and more possible. But I really don't want to start um, doing some kind of Raspberry Pi specific hardware abstraction layer in core Octoprint or something like this. It just doesn't fit this general platform agnostic approach that I currently run. And that is also something that I feel is appreciated because there are a bunch of people, as I said, who do run this on Windows, on Mac, on uh, FreeBSD on some kind of other hardware platform than a Raspberry Pi that might be completely incompatible to, incompatible to it. Um, so 
yeah, this is my stance on that. Um, again, if I can help there in any way that does not involve me adding something to the core application other than generally uh, usable plugin hooks or something like that, I'm, I'll, I'll happily do that. Just let me know. But uh, until then, I'm just yeah, basically waiting, wait, uh, playing the wait and see game to see what the community comes up with and trying to help there instead of trying to force my own ideas on everyone. Yeah. Okay, and the second of two questions um, from Mike. Have you seen the Clipper project and do you see an opportunity for better integration between Octoprint and Clipper? So I have seen the project as in I uh, heard the name and I think I went on the on the GitHub page once or twice, but this is about it. So I have to admit that I did not yet have a chance to take a closer look how it works, how um, how it interfaces and uh, with with Octoprint in the first place and all that. I have a rough idea how it does, but this is really, really just a rough idea. So I can't really say anything about this at this point, I fear. So um, I actually don't even know where the pain points are with the current integration, um, which would uh, mean that you, uh, yeah, that would basically ask for a better kind of integration. So. Um, would have helped to be more specific here, maybe. Um, anyhow, that were the questions. Uh, we don't have any in the live chat because the two people there are completely questionless, <laughs> which is fine. Um, but in that case, yeah, well, I guess in that case, we'll make this a very short one, probably because yeah, I honestly, right now, I also don't have any topic to rant about from the top of my head. Um, at least not something that I could fit into half an hour. <laughs> and in that case, um, yeah, okay. Um, then let's just wrap this up briefly. Um, the next uh, broadcast will be in roughly a month. I will, as usual, post the appointment on Patreon. Um, so, yeah, probably something like the beginning of June, uh, maybe the first, maybe even the, 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 the first, um, uh, the weekend in June, which would be this June 2nd, I think. I'm not completely sure yet. I have to check my calendar and, and, and all that, but yeah, something like that, so roughly. Huh? Um, and yeah, that would be that. Um, I also wanted to take this opportunity to mention that it's now already been two years since I started the Patreon campaign. So I, I actually started it on April 13th, 2016. So this now makes it over two years um, being 100% crowdfunded. And uh, it's it's really tricky and hard to believe for me to uh, uh, to believe, yeah, to, to believe for me. Sorry, my my English is a bit wonky today. Uh, that's already been that long. Uh, it doesn't feel like two years. It it doesn't even feel like one year. And I'm also still not fully sure what the heck I'm even doing here most of the time. But. Uh, I'm certainly very, very grateful for your continued support and uh, for uh, yeah all uh, all of the all of you on on Patreon, on PayPal, and on LiberaPay, um, who are making this possible to for me to to yeah to continue working on Octoprint full time, to dedicate the time to this project that it deserves and that it also let's face it needs. <laughs> um, it's it's a huge project. It's a huge amount of work to keep it running smoothly and to uh, ensure its ongoing development. And I'm really really glad that I can, uh, yeah, do that still. Um, and yeah, it's it's something that I'm really really grateful for, as I said. And I just wanted to wanted to say a big big heartfelt thank you for that again. Yeah, and. With that, I guess I'll just say until next time. <laughs> and um, yeah, until then, bye.